Good morning, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord together. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements this morning. First of all, make sure that you check out the insert. There are a lot of things in there. Um, we have moved the staff parish meeting to next Tuesday, so a week from Tuesday. There will be no Tuesday study this week or next week. Um, and don't forget, the United Women in Faith still have the basement sale set up downstairs, so we'd love for you to go shopping. And also, we're getting ready to put out a summer link. And if you have things to go in the newsletter, we'd love for you to get those to Janet as soon as possible. Of course, Strawberry Festival is next week. Believe it or not, it's already here. We do need some additional help for the pancake breakfast, um, which benefits the parish house. And so there is an insert, I believe, this morning that you can fill out and leave in the offering plate if you are interested in helping with that. Um, that's all that I want to point out to you today. I thank you for the cards and the prayers that you have sent uh, in the loss of my cousin. We did have his funeral and burial this week. Um, but it was a, a reminder in the places that I was that God is still in control and still sits on his throne. And I pray that you remember that this morning as we sit back, and lay our burdens at the feet of foot of the throne, and give God all of our worship and praise. Let the worship begin. Would you please stand and receive the call to worship this morning? Something awakened us this morning. Perhaps the morning's light, the smell of brewing coffee, the sounds of alarm by our bed, or the music of birds singing their morning anthems. And now we gather with awakened spirits to worship the creator of this day. Something moved us this morning. We left behind sleep or a restless night. We prepared for the days and we left our homes for here. And now we gather in this place to worship Jesus who moves among us and to follow the spirit which leads us into deeds of love. May ours be a faith that is both awake and moving as we worship the almighty. Let us pray. 
We praise you, O oh God, and celebrate your presence with us. Your glory fills all heaven and earth, all time and space. Your gifts surround us in the beauty of this day and dwell within us. We are your children. Come to wipe away our tears and comfort us in our distress. Come to heal our divisions and overcome our prejudices. Come, that we might be loved into discipleship. Amen. Amen. And now let's join together in the opening hymn, God is Here, number 660. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the epistle lesson this morning comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Hear God's word. <clears throat> 
Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. <clears throat> Hear the call to confession. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world, for people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Let us uncover our sin before the liberating light of Christ. Let's pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not been sincere Christians. We claim to follow Jesus, but not, have not taken his path of sacrificial love. We profess to be disciples, but we are not willing to bear the cost of discipleship. We affirm the virtue of self-denial, but we indulge our selfish desires and seek earthly gain. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for sincere repentance through Jesus Christ our Lord. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And our response is from the faith we sing, 2108, Oh, how he loves you and me.
We begin worship today with songs that God inspires us to sing. Jesus teaches his followers the song about his love for the world. Jesus hopes that we would all join in singing and living into the song of love. Today, in giving to others, let us join in the song so that the whole world may hear the beautiful and welcoming melody of God's love. Let us pray. Pour your spirit upon these gifts, O God. Send them into the world as a sign and song of your joyous work of love. Use them to call and welcome into your house of love all who are your friends and our sisters and brothers. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And as the children come forward for wiggle time, I invite you to sing along. Verse 1 of Seek Ye First.
We might just take out the pulpit and just let us all gather up here on this flat spot. Wouldn't that be the one? On the, on the diving board? In the tank. Wow. <laughs> you all bring so much joy to us. It's so good to see you. I'm so thankful for you. I, when Several years ago, I went to a kind of a play. It was a big concert play kind of thing. And, um, and it was a play about Jesus the week before Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. And so I'm sitting in this great big sanctuary and there's this big massive cross in the front of the sanctuary and there's people here and there's like a set that looked like a, you might something you might see in the Holy Land back in Jesus' day. And, and, and there, was, there was just all kinds of people everywhere. And, and, and as it was starting, as the program started, I could hear all this noise around. I couldn't really tell where that noise was coming from. So I'm sitting there beside Martha, and the noise got a little bigger and a little bigger, and then these people started walking down the aisle right beside me, right where I was sitting in that room. And when I looked over, the first person, it was Jesus. It was someone dressed up like Jesus in a robe and and a sash around the, the neck and the waist, and, and his hair was, was long like Jesus' hair might have been. He had a beard. He, he, I, don't know, I don't know what you think Jesus looks like. I don't know. But I don't know what you think Jesus looks like, but when I saw this guy, he looked just like Jesus. And he walked by and he had this smile on his face and he walked a little further in front of me and he stopped and there was a a guy sitting there with his family and he was holding his little girl. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus stopped and reached over and picked that little girl up and put her in his arms and carried her right to the front of that big church for that program. Yeah. We'll talk about it in just a minute. Yeah. And, and so when he picked that little girl up, I, the tears came to my eyes. Because he chose that little girl. And you know what the thought was that came to my mind? I, for, I, first of all, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm a big boy. I don't think that Jesus is going to pick me up. But when he picked up that little girl, I felt like Jesus picked up me. That's just the feeling I got. And I wanted to talk to you all this morning to let you know that, that Jesus, Jesus picks you. Yeah, he picked the one little girl there at the program. But as a man, I felt like he picked me. I felt like I was a child. Well, today, I want to tell you that Jesus picks you, each one of you. Jesus loves you so much that I like what uh, a guy that I read, his first name is Max, and Max says that, that Jesus loves you so much that if Jesus has a refrigerator, your picture's on it. Jesus picks you. He chooses you. You are so special to Jesus. And when I see you here, it just reminds me that Jesus picks you. And what a blessing you are to me to show me love and joy, enthusiasm and friendship and conversation and all those wonderful things. So I, I, I want to say thank you to you. But we all want to say thank you to Jesus because Jesus picks us all. 
Let's have a prayer. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for uh, the enthusiasm that our, our little people share with us today. We thank you for their joy they bring, and we thank you, O oh Lord, for, for choosing them. We thank you for choosing us all. Help us to know, O oh Lord, that you reach down and pick us up, and you, have, you lovingly hold us in your arms. Amen. Oh, man. Thank you so much for coming up today. You guys look terrific. Did you get up? Thank, thank you all for your patience. <laughs> I'll, I'll be upright before long and at the pulpit before long. I thank you for your patience. I've looked forward all week to be with you this morning. Each one of you in your own special way become a, a punctuation for my week. It says that last week's over and it's a new week. But the new week brings with us um, the familiar faces and the cherished relationships and it brings to us a reminder that God does love us. That Jesus picks you. If you were a little girl in her father's arms and Jesus walked by, he, he'd pick her up. I just wanted to, to let you all know that this morning. The gospel lesson comes to us this morning from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, he writes, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no other than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know what the master's business is. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you may ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love 
each other. The word of God for God's people this day. Thanks be to God. Some of us grew up in a place or a time when there really wasn't any organized sports leagues for kids in our rural neighborhoods. There was a Babe Ruth bas- uh, ba- uh, baseball team in Beckley, but 10 miles was just too long to drive in those days. So there wasn't anything organized, no soccer teams, no swim teams, no, no anything. We played basketball at, 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 el- at the elementary school, and of course, there was Friday night football and basketball, and, but no really organized League. So the neighborhood gang would gather at the basketball courts at the elementary school or in the field behind the school or somebody's yard. It was just wherever we could shoot a basketball or hit a softball without breaking a window and, and play whatever game was in season. At least that's what happened in Shady Springs. And almost always, two of the older, bigger, more athletic boys would be team captains and do the choose up of the, the choosing of sides, backyard choice. And in those days, as I remember it, Jack Allen, my younger, redheaded, freckled pal. And I were younger and, and smaller than most of the other guys who would stand at the, and I would stand, we would stand at the end of the lineup hoping to be picked for the team. But more than once, the captains would complete their teams and then look over at skinny, scrawny Jack Allen and I and, and let all let down, all doubtful, and one of the team captains would say to the other, you can have Jack Allen, I'll take Steve. Now, as you might imagine, that didn't do much for a little boy's confidence and self-esteem. But at least we got in the game. The gospel lesson for today reminds us that Jesus Christ chooses us. Jesus Christ encourages us, and Jesus welcomes us to be on his side, to reside with him. He blesses us and embraces us into the family of God. We don't pick Jesus. Jesus picks you. Jesus picks me. He seeks us out, pursues us, not by force, but out of his great love for us. The heart of Christ reaches to us in a profound desire that we know Jesus, that we live with him and he with us, that we follow Jesus in intimate closeness along the journey to become our best self. This is essential in understanding the message of the Bible. And we are and do as people of faith, as people who follow Jesus in a response to the Creator's compassionate advances and actions of God's graces in our behalf. We are called. We are chosen. We are blessed. We are cherished by the one who created us, by the one who loves us the most, by the one who laid down his life for us on the cross. Bishop Bev Jones, he was the, uh, the, she was the former resident a bishop at Candler School of Theology told the story about stopping in Greensboro, North Carolina to visit with Reverend John Redhead. (laughs) 
Jack Redhead, as his friends called him, was then 85 years old and pastor emeritus at First Presbyterian Church there in Greensboro, where he had served as a senior pastor for many, many years. And as the two pe preachers wound up their visit, Bev Jones leaned forward and asked one question. Jack, Reverend Redhead, what's the bottom line of your long life of over 60 years of ministry? And Jack Redhead paused in deep thought. And then he said, the satisfaction of doing God's will and enjoying fellowship with Jesus Christ in doing it, that is the bottom line. That's powerful. Is there any greater fulfillment than doing God's will and following Jesus who resides in us through his great love for us? That's God's gracious offer to every one of us. Jesus Christ alive in us. Jesus Christ living through us. Dietrich Bonhoeffer described the church as Christ taking form in a body of believers. Did you get that? Christ taking form in the body of believers. You see, the church is much less of an institution with rules and regulations, hierarchy, and a list of do's and don'ts as it is an abiding body of relationships. The church is a body of believers, people in whom Jesus Christ resides. More than an organization, the church is an organism people who love God and seek to follow Jesus, who love and cherish each other, treat others with dignity and honesty, gladly caring for each other's needs and building bridges of understanding and peace. The church is the animation of the body of Christ in the world where we live and work and play. There's a word for that. Uh, Mark Twain said the difference between a word and the right word is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. The word is covenant. Covenant. And it goes all the way back to Noah. God's covenant with Noah was renewed with Abraham, with Moses and the prophets, and then Jesus in this new commandment, this new covenant he brings. Do you remember when we were in the upper room with Jesus and the disciples the evening before he was crucified? It happened right after Jesus handed Judas, the betrayer, the piece of bread crust, and Jesus told him to do what he had to do and get it over with. And that's when Jesus said, a new command I give you, a new covenant I offer you, love one another. And the way that I have loved you, love one another. This is how we, how everyone will recognize that you are my followers. When they see the love you have for each other, that's the best way to love. 
You see, a covenant is very personal. A covenant is a bond made from the heart. It's a bond of faith and trust. It's a bond with Jesus and everyone else. It is a commitment of love. And when we make ourselves at home in Jesus' love, that's when we feel and know that we are in the very place that Jesus wants us to be. The words of the gospel for today are a last will and testament before Jesus and the disciples. The Lord sincerely opens his heart and bears his soul in his last hours on earth. These are famous last words, you see. He makes it clear to his followers that they are not servants, they are not slaves, but they're friends. A servant does not know what the master's doing, as Jesus pointed out. Friends, on the other hand, are open and honest with each other. Remember what Jesus said to the disciples, I have let you in on everything I have heard from my Father. It's my choice, and I choose you. Jesus puts us in our worlds to bear fruit. Fruit that won't spoil. That's getting down to where we live, isn't it? As fruit bearers, whatever we need to bring, uh, whatever we need to bring our covenant a love of love to life, Jesus will give it to you. Love one another as I have loved you, even if you have put your life on the line for another. Peter's story, the, a great spiritual leader in South Africa who worked along with Archbishop Tutu and Nelson Mandela in dismantling apartheid, Peter's story said that when we invite Christ into our lives, he insists that we let him bring his friends with him. Jesus made it un unmistakable that we cannot truly love him and do not also love those he loves and those for whom he died. We must love even those we do not or cannot like for Christ's sake. And then as we read further in John's Gospel to chapter 17, we find a very priestly prayer of the Lord. He intercedes earnestly with his Father that his followers may be one, even as he and the Father are one. He wants us to be together. He wants us to be united. Jesus prayed that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He put the disciples on watch to watch for him, and they kept falling asleep. And he goes back. I can just see Jesus on his knees leaning forward in Garden of Gethsemane praying this prayer. that we all be one with each other as Jesus is one with the Father. Church, this love is exceedingly paramount today as conflict across the world mounts Politically, socially, racially, and even when the church disagrees with itself. Christ's love is exceedingly important. 
And times such as these call for sincere faith and reconciling love and, st and indeed for open minds and open hearts. And then there's one more piece of our text that needs our close attention for this message to be complete. And that's Jesus' urgent appeal that our lives make a difference by being fruitful. The late Reverend Paul Shearer, former pastor of Holy Trinity Lutheran in New York, bothers our consciousness, as Billy Scott Mix used to say. He bothers our conscience and heightens our imagination with his seasoned insight. He wrote, the fundamental joy of being a Christian consists not in being good, I get tired of that. That's what he said. I get tired of that. But the joy of being a Christian is standing with God against, against some darkness and some void and watching the light, capital L, and watching the light come in. The joy of faith is having, by the mercies of God's grace, have God shape you. Have God mold you as a potter molds a vase. This can happen when we get it right. When we catch on to Jesus' analogy of himself as the vine and you and I are the branches and God as the vine dresser, that system works. The vine drawing its energy from the sun and the soil and the rain and you and I drawing our strength from the vine and God controlling and cultivating the whole process. God, after all, has chosen us. God is with us, and God is in us, and God is in charge, empowering us. You see, as committed Christians, we are not doing our work. We're not even, even doing God's work. God is doing God's work through us. That's why Jesus makes the astounding statement that the Father will give us whatever we ask in his name. Not anything we want, not anything we, we might try to do, but what God wants to do through us. And let us never forget, our mutual love for one another is how the world will see who Jesus is. I really want you to hear this. I've said it for years, and I'm going to keep saying it as long as I can. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And that's the main thing. The main thing is God chooses you. God chooses you to love one another as Christ has loved you. It's Communion Sunday, you know. I unexpectedly ran across this, and I just had to share it with you this morning. There's a lovely invitation to Holy Communion from the Christian church, the Disciples of Christ, that says, this is the table of the Lord. Come not because you were strong, but because you were weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love the Lord more. Come because the Lord loves you. 
and gives himself for you. Let this bread and wine be for you the token and pledge of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. All of this is meant for you if you will receive him in humble faith because God chooses you to love one another as Jesus loves you. Amen.
Would you please join me with a great Thanksgiving? And thank you, choir. Thank you, Eva and Renee. What a glorious anthem. The Spirit of God to be with you all. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to our God. Holy One, Holy God, Holy Three. Before all that is, you were God. After all is finished, you will be God. Archangels sound their trumpets. Angels teach us their song. Saints pull us into your presence. Holy, holy, holy God, our life, our mercy, our might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Save us, we pray, you beyond all. Blessed and blessing is the one who comes through Mary and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, the child of God and friend of sinners, embraced our humanity by wearing it and graced our earth by walking it. Sinless was his presence, and perfect was his offering on the cross. Jesus Christ now calls all to live as God's own children. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, you beyond the galaxies and under the oceans. You inside the leaves and the pouring down rain. You opening the flowers. You giving us your image and carrying us through the waters. You holding us in the night. You lived as Jesus among us, healing, teaching, dying, rising, inviting us all to your feast. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we remember your son, his life with the humble, his death among the wretched, is resurrection for us all. And so we cry mercy, mercy. Glory. glory, and we cry blessing. blessing. Holy God, we beg for your spirit. Transfigure our minds. Make us while many united. Make us though broken whole. Make us despite death alive. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Our life, our mercy, our might, our life, our treasure, our tree, our way, our truth, our life. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three. Praise now, praise tomorrow, praise forever. And as Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. As Dan plays this morning for a few moments of re uh, reflection and meditation, I invite you to come and stand or kneel at the altar if you have a prayer concern, whether it's a prayer concern about yourself or a prayer concern for someone else, or maybe you just want to come to the altar and pray, just to remember that God chooses you and you choose God
A closing hymn of dedication is number 614. For the bread which you have broken, you're invited to stand and sing. Thank you for being here today. Let's join in the benediction. Friends and beloved of Christ, you have been chosen to go into this world with the message of God's love. Bear fruit of hope and joy, peace and grace with all that you meet. May God's peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you.